Saram, dear sir, and greetings and a warm welcome to the studios of Radio Sai. Thank It's you. It's an honor to have you again in the studios. Thank you. In a couple of days from today, we will be observing the Aradhana Day 2015. And I would like to ask you, when you reflect on April 2011 and now, what thoughts flood your mind? How has this journey been from April 24, 2011 till now? Perhaps it's a journey you thought you'll never ever make in your life. I'm not the only one who had this feeling that a time will come when we'll have to be alone. When I say alone, that is to say physically apart from Swami. So those were the dark days, April 2011 when Swami was in the hospital and uh, when the Maha Samadhi took place. It was a very difficult time, not only for me, for, for the countless devotees of Swami, but for one who had been with Him physically for uh, nearly 30 years in Prashanti Niliam and having had the blessing of being with Him most of the days, both morning and evening. It was a very difficult thing to overcome the great sense of void. And uh, we have been accustomed not only to seeing Him, but to receiving instructions from Him and to place our daily activities before Him and then seek further guidance from Him. It was a part of our life. So when I did not have that any longer, it was quite a difficult experience to go through. And it took quite considerable time before I could ever pull myself up to face the situation that had arisen. But slowly, since we've also heard from Swami as to how we should carry on with the work entrusted to us, and especially if it happens to be the work entrusted by Swami Himself regarding His own mission, there is no alternative but to really pull oneself up and to face the difficulties, whatever they may be, and to carry on work as in as normal a way as possible. It took quite a while, as I said, to regain a sense of being back in the active world. No doubt, the few weeks or even months that followed Mahasamadhi gave a sense of being, there is a, there is a disconnect as it were, you know, with the external world, so far as I am concerned, was concerned. But then, it required great efforts to shake off that feeling. When you are accustomed to having God by yourself, by your side, nothing really seemed difficult. But in his absence, physical absence, it called for a, a, a great effort to to draw from your inner strength and uh, never having envisaged a day that I would be in this world beyond the Swami's sojourn on earth made it very difficult for me. I'm sure this feeling must be must have been shared by many, many. 
but as functionaries of his trust and his organization we knew that we have to get into an action mode we have to bring ourselves to deal with the daily matters of the trust and the organization of course long years of closely working with bhagwan's institutions most of us knew what was expected of us by him and in a way i suppose even if it is not a formal training it was a very quiet absorption of the values and systems which swami had put in position so well on the one hand we were aware of what we should be doing we also required a great sense of determination on our part to draw that eternal spirit of swami that is within us we cannot seek swami as a physical reality outside it has to be drawn as the eternal spirit within me and within all of us so the first few months in fact made me withdraw to some extent from the day to day functioning but soon thereafter i came to understand to realize that the best way to do justice to swami's mission is to get back and get seriously engaged in all the activities of the trust and the organization i remember the last time you were on on radio sai you mentioned that this is a great loss but this loss uh, is paradoxical because it is a loss which only propels you to do more yes because after the initial shock you know that you have to invoke his presence within and we have heard him during many discourses that this body is like a water bubble but when it happened to the divine body itself it was a shock that no amount of having listened to his discourses could lessen so then i realized you cannot mentally cognize this you have to spiritually draw sustenance from the universal spirit that he is and that each one of us embodies in himself and that is the conclusion not as i said mentally cognized but deep within me felt and understood that i have to really remember the teachings of swami and find not only solace but also regain the confidence in myself to continue to engage myself in the multifarious 
duties and functions of the trust in the organization. As you mentioned that many times you'll have to call on the inner reserves of spiritual strength that Swami has suffused us within and it calls for a lot of determination. May I ask you, in your moments of low, there are times when you perhaps would look at Swami and almost break down, Swami, why did you leave me here? You, how, how is it that you know you just expected me to carry on with all this and you are not there here? In those moments, are there certain interactions with Swami or certain scenes that you have witnessed personally or certain directions that He has given you which sort of become your eternal sources of inspiration which helps you to collect your energies and get back into His work? More than, you know, conversations with Him, it is these discourses in which over more than four decades which I had the blessings to listen to that really gave the strength you know in one of the discourses Swami said when Krishna was no longer there how Pandavas felt absolutely lifeless as it were and it is one thing to hear in a discourse is yet another to experience that feeling of void and that utter helplessness when Swami was no longer with us so we knew at that time that these are eternally played on the world scene by Bhagwan from age to age. And here he was, unlike other avatars, created institutions which need to be looked after, at least so far as we are concerned, what we consider to be for all time to come. We can't put a time limit. This is something which has to go on. And I'm sure with his will, successive generations of people who are going to be associated with these institutions will certainly have the wisdom and also the capacity to carry on that, these great institutions. One other thing I wanted to ask is when some of us reflect on the events preceding April 2011. For many of us, it was not even in the realm of possible outcomes, what happened. And I think it was like that for so many. But I remember you saying that you too were in that position, even though you were seeing the heartbreaking condition, what was happening in the hospital, you always wanted to allow that margin of mystery because it is the avatar. But, and at that time, later when you think, sometimes it seems that, after all, it was not all that abrupt. Perhaps it was in some ways pre-planned. Maybe there were those signs and signals. Maybe we did not see them. Maybe we did not really realize them coming. Do you get we such didn't, a I, I think personally, many of us didn't want even to reckon with that possibility. Therefore, even if it surfaced in your mind, you had a knack of pushing it out. Because, firstly, it is something which we cannot possibly live with at that time under the, the stress that was building up. But also, as you said, you cannot rule out the possibility of anything which is beyond our normal understanding that can happen. It is not merely our understanding of that latent capacity in in God, which is not very visible to us. But even in a very close, personal, physical way, it was something which mo most of us felt that for the sake of the devotee's prayer, Swami would again 
like to come back and be amidst us. Even when he was ill, and there was a, a progressive enfeeblement, Swami would come down and say that he would like to go and give darshan. We know and we knew at the time that it was not possible for Swami to make that going around amidst the devotees. But the response usually was that the devotees will be disappointed if I don't go out for darshan. And more than that, I think there was a joy in him that came because he was giving joy to so many. So his own physical condition was something which was pushed into the background. When Swami comes out and his face is lighted as it were, when you see the bright faces of so many devotees. So that gave us an indication that what is important is that spirit of Swami to do till the last whatever needs to be done for the sake of devotees. And if we are today doing work regarding his institutions, it must be the same feeling that must imbue us that we're doing something which will give Swami the joy that he had when he saw his own devotees. So we are trying to look after these, look after these institutions as though they are visible embodiments of Swami today. And that their well-being is the equivalent of the joy of Swami at the time.